give him some. Oh my goodness, look at them all. Well, here on a farm west of Boring, we're facing a heat wave. A heat wave coming up this weekend and up through July 4th. It's going to be in the low to mid 90s, I guess, which for much of the country, that's no heat wave. But so this is today we are going to try out the rainwater system that we have and test it out and see if it's worthwhile using for watering our plants. So there's the tote, uh, pretty much full. Got a hose hooked on there and the valve is open. And if you follow this hose down here, right over there, oh, there's mama over there, watering her plants. So there's not a whole bunch of pressure yet, but I'm gonna move, I think one of the totes up higher on the hillside and then we'll fill that up with the transfer pump and uh, see if that will increase the pressure a little bit. Strawberry heaven! We got some nice wood chips spread underneath the uh, pear tree here. This pear tree my mother planted, who knows when, probably when I was about 12 or 13, who knows, probably junior high. And she decided she's going to have a pear tree. And so that pear tree's been there ever since. That's quite a few years ago. And it looks like the bees are busy, busy bees. Things are really taking shape here in the garden at Farm West of Boring. Things are looking pretty nice. Strawberries. Herbs, I think there's, well, I'm not quite sure what she's got planted there. Some more strawberries. Our blueberries. Again, my mom planted those blueberries. Who knows when? Probably back in the 70s early 70s late 60s maybe mid 60s i don't know they've been there for a long time and they produce like mad there's i can see there's a ton of berries on those bushes and this area right here used to be my dad's rose garden he built this rock wall and he put a bunch of roses in here but they've all gone by the wayside and now the lady of the farm here is made this into a nice little vegetable garden and I appreciate that. This is a grape arbor <laughs> again that my dad planted these grapes who knows when probably 1965, 1970 somewhere and they've just been growing they keep growing don't really take much care for them but Nancy's but the lady of the farm has been pruning them back and, and taking the dead wood off and looks like they've been putting some nice little bamboo runners on there for the plants to cling on to and we're going to have some Concord grapes. They make some nice juice. So I can't really help myself. It's about 20 to 6 on a Thursday and I was just about ready to go inside but you know it's a sunny day outside and I've got this log sitting here and I thought you know what I can't help myself I need to go down there and make a couple of cuts so let's try to see what we can do here check it out so let's check out what this thing is See on the bunks there, 
there's 18, 18 inches. And nine and a half to the pith. This end, 17 inches, and eight and three quarters to the pit. So we'll have to adjust for that. Move the tow bar down there. having the bed at this height it's right about my my knee level the only problem is is stepping over it I think what I'm going to do is mill some boards to go across from rail to rail that way you can step up onto that rather than having to step in and then down again okay so now let's Think about how we're going to cut this. This log is eight foot seven, so that's perfect for making some eight foot two by fours, two by sixes. I had a pen in my pocket. Oh man. Some of you guys are probably a lot more experienced than I am and able to just come up with an idea here really fast, but I'm just going to think through this. So here's our pith. And if I wanted to get a, a six by six out of this, do I really need a six by six or do I need some four by fours? Let's go with the four by four for now. So there's three. What am I doing? That's for six. So there's two and four. So that would be my, there would be my four by four. I'm not very comfortable sitting on this rail. So there's level and of course I'm making these um, cuts at actual size that's just the way I do it so there's a four by four four Okay, so there's a 4x4 out of the pith. I want that pith at the other end to be 9.5. So 9.5. So now, what do I do from here? I make this. So I could do that, I could cut that down, or do I just want to make a, a go up two inches, four, two, 
Let's see that bubble much. Okay, so there's. I'm just gonna guess on these in here. So if I cut those bottom pieces out, I can get I can get a couple two by well, at least 12 inches there, so I get a couple 2x6s out of that, but there's a lot of waste. So maybe a 2x6 and a 2x8. And this one, a 6 and a 6 would be too much. That'd be real close. Might be able to get two 6s. And if I went with 4 inches here, I'd get about... So if I want inch and a half, I can get three out of that. Up here. So what it looks like to me is that if I went to, instead of two inches, if I went to inch and a half, I made it inch and a half by four. I could possibly get more out of this. See, there'd be four and a half. So maybe if I go to inch and a half, and because I don't really need those big beefy two two inchers. Um, if that was the case, if I made a cant out of this, that was. Four and a half there, four and a half there, so that would be a, basically a thirteen and a half cat, and what would it be this way, about the same, about thirteen and a half by thirteen and a half, and that would give me a four by four, true book four by four, and one, two, three inch and a halves. And one, two, three inch and a halves up above. So why don't I try that? Although well, we're going down to the other end, so it may not work as well. I'll we'll try it. So we're going to want this first cut to be 16 inches. And we want that pith to be nine and a half inches up. Hopefully I'll get better at this because I have a lot of uh, these logs to cut. So now we'll put the level on here, laser. Set right at the blade height. Okay, so now I'm going to take it up to 16 inches, 14, 15, 16, so that's actually a little bit higher than my mark. Oh, where is the tape measure when you want it? Here it is over here. There we are, right at 16. Okay, we'll try that. There's my little hatchet right there. Trusty hatchet. Oh boy. Oh. Ah, 
I'm so lame. This came off of a tree that was quite a few, quite a ways off the ground, so I really doubt that there's any metal in here. Must be from a bullet or something. No, I don't think so. So 16 inches high. Those are 10. That's about 10 and a half. So it's going to be fine. Here we are. Gas is off right now. We're turning the gas on. Leave the choke on and we'll turn the choke off once we start it. Tension is set to two and a half turns. We're at 16. We're going to turn this on and I'm going to set this to zero. Now, one thing that I do with this mill is write down the hours. And since I haven't written them down all the time, what I have done is taken a picture with my beautiful little phone and we'll hit the button twice maybe so we're at 9.8 hours so let's go ahead and try this That log is shaken. I'm going to uh, figure out a way. Boy, I hate to move it now because it's I've already got that cut going. And that one down there is not up tight against there. So I'm going to put that in there and readjust this, this log dog. Okay, so I've readjusted this and this is pretty solid. And it's up against that one down there, so maybe it'll make a difference. I hear a kid screaming down there. Hopefully they're not being tortured. Maybe it's just that they didn't get their dinner on time. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Got some knots in here. Nice Douglas fir. Yeah, there's that screaming going on down there. About a 13 inch cant, so we're gonna end up with some weighing up there. So what would you do? Flip this thing 180 degrees and start from the other side? or take some inch and a half cuts off of here. So maybe one inch and a half cut. How about one inch and a, uh, one inch and a half cut? So that would take it down to about there. 
And out of that, we'd be able to get a six and a four, roughly. Or without any weighing, we could get two fours. Or we could get a two by eight. I guess I'm going to make up your mind later on that one. I'm going to cut an inch and a half off of that, and then I'll flip it. Okay, so since I'm going to go to an inch and a half, I should probably allow a little for the blade thickness. So I'm going to go ahead and go down. Right now, I'm up half of an inch above the old the cut that I just made. So I'm going to go down... You're going to go to zero. So that should be, that's my cut right there. So now if I go down, inch and a half, does that allow for the blade? No. So if I go inch and five eighths, I go inch and five eighths. So what I will do is I will cut, I'll make a little cut there and then I'm gonna measure it. And now I am down to about 14. And my log dogs are still about 10 and a half and 10. So I'm fine. Look, my log stops, I'm sorry, log stops. Let's see what I get there. Yeah, boy, right at inch and a half. So we'll add an eighth. So this is another good use of my log bunk, is I can put my I can put my cuts on here and pick them up with the forks later on. That makes it pretty nice. <laughs> I think I will put these on here too that way it's easier to pick them up okay so they were at zero and I'm gonna go down one and five eighths and come back up to one and five eighths so there we go one and five eighths that should end up being an inch and a half We'll click that one and then we'll flip it 90 degrees. Well, that turned out pretty good. We'll flip it one more time, make that other cut, and then we'll have a nice cant there.
here's the chickens coming down to see what I'm doing. Are you ladies gonna are you ladies gonna go to bed? You need to go to bed, ladies. Okay, so what I've decided to do here is go up one inch above my final cut. And I think I might be able to get a one inch board out of this. Um, I should have probably gotten some out of those two flitches out there, but we'll try it. Go one inch higher and then we'll drop an inch and see what we get. Now yeah, that was a good move. Look at that, we got a nice 10 inch, 10 inch or one inch. But if you flip this over, probably get. Probably get eight inches, eight inches out of it. I guess if you were going to use it for siding, you could put the 10 inch side out and it'd be fine. But there's a decent board there. And now here's my cant. And we've got three inches on that side, so we can get two, two buys out of that. Three inches on that side, we can get two, two bytes out of that. We get our four by four, and then three two by fours, two two by fours, and a one inch board, maybe. So, what are these gonna be? These are gonna be sixes. Four, eight, eight two by eight two by sixes, three two by fours, five two by fours, eight two by sixes. Five two by fours and a four by four, plus whatever we can get out of these out here. Now we've got this one inch board here, and got an inch and a half by. Well, that's a good six at least there, and that's an eight. So eight. Nine two by sixes, a two by eight, a one by eight, five two by fours, and a one by four. I'd say that's a pretty good day's work. Let's go have dinner. Well, I finished off this video several times today. Uh, it's 20 after seven, and the neighbors down there are probably not going to be too happy if I keep going. So, it's time to go have some dinner. If you enjoyed today's video, please. Give us a thumbs up, big thumbs up aruo, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified next time we do a video. We've been doing them pretty much every day or every other day lately, and uh, coming up soon is going to be cutting down one of those big trees down there, so that's going to be interesting. So thanks for coming along. We'll see you next time.